Atlantis, the ancient city with flying machines and crystal power sources that appears to have vanished without a trace, is a source of constant mystery. People have been traveling the world and raking the ocean floor in starch for this lost city. However, could it be hiding in plain sight? In the middle of the scorching Sahara Desert, the most compelling evidence about the existence of the lost city of Atlantis in the Sahara Desert comes from an ancient map. This map was prepared by Herodotus, who traveled far and wide to record and observe locations of various territories and prepare an accurate and reliable map of the known world in 450 BC. It is no wonder that he is called the father of history because of his systematic account of past events. Even modern archaeologists agree that he is a pretty reliable source of information. Well, he made a map that is studied by researchers even today. Right next to the start of Gibraltar, Heodotus had demarcated the territories of an ancient land called Atlantis. So, could this be the lost city? Also, a mountain chain next to the Strait of Gibraltar called Mount Atlas is present in what is the present-day Mauritania. It so happens that this chain of mountains was named after the first king of Mauritania, King Atlas. This also happens to be connected to Greek god Poseidon and his son Atlas. The lost city of Atlantis was first mentioned in the texts Timaeus and Critias, written by the legendary Greek philosopher Plato in 360 BC. He wrote that Atlantis was larger than Libya and Asia together. He also went into great detail about how a confederation of marvelous and powerful kings ruled over the island. He gave an account of the origin of Atlantis. Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea and earthquakes, came across Atlantis when he was in search of the world's biggest island. At that time, it was inhabited by the most beautiful and intelligent people on earth. There he found his one true love, Clato. To keep Clato for himself, he built a palace into a mountain and surrounded it with three concentric circular moats separated by large rings of land. He let her reside here. Later she gave birth to five sets of twin boys the first of which Atlas became the king of Atlantis. Her other sons were also rulers of the surrounding nine kingdoms named the Kingdoms of Atlantis. Could the first king of Mauritania, Atlas, and the king of the sprawling and advanced underwater kingdom be one and the same? It is a strong possibility. Here is another piece of exciting information. In the west central Mauritania on the west coast of Africa lies a mysterious structure. It's a nearly symmetrical geologic structure that consists of multiple concentric circles of exposed sedimentary rock that can be seen from space. It is called the Rishat structure or Guelb Air Rishat, also nicknamed the Eye of the Sahara. This structure was first discovered from space. In the 1960s, astronauts who were a part of Project Gemini were searching for circular impact structures when they came across the Eye of the Sahara and took photographs of it from the Earth's orbit. So what led to the formation of this fascinating structure? In the early days, it was thought to have been made by an extraterrestrial impact. Now, geologists believe that it is made completely planet-side. The Eye of Sahara features a 198-meter-tall dome that is composed entirely of breccia. Breccia is a type of rock made when numerous smaller rocks fuse together. Geologists classify this central plateau as a domed anticline. Surrounding this plateau are concentric rings of stone with low valleys between each. It forms a distinct eye-like shape when viewed from above. This structure is huge. It is approximately 40 kilometers wide with igneous and sedimentary rocks. Although the composition and structure of the Richat are known, its origin is still a source of mystery. Now, how is it connected to Atlantis? Well, according to accounts of Atlantis written by Plato, this city was supposedly 127 stadia, or 23 kilometers across. This is a close match to the dimensions of a portion of the Richa. There also appears to be evidence of water draining out of the Raichat structure into the ocean, suggesting it was once surrounded by water just like in Atlantis. Also, the construction of Atlantis with its concentric circles strongly resembles Richat which also happens to be in the exact location where Herodotus had marked Atlantis. If you are still not convinced that the lost city of Atlantis is found, hear this out. When viewing aerial photos of the Eye of the Sahara, large white spots are visible. These are in fact pockets of salt on the surface of the sand. This clearly indicates that ocean water flowed over this area in the last 12,000 years. There are also various sources that claim that Shara was not always the vast expanse of sand as we see now, it used to be a lush green oasis. 
Then a huge flood stripped away everything, leaving behind a deserted wasteland. Originally, people thought that Africa was underwater a lot earlier than just 12000 years ago. So if you believe that Atlantis was underwater, and since the Risha is nowhere near water, it cannot be Atlantis. Think again. The eye may be landlocked now, but it hasn't always been that way. In the case that the numbers about when the Rishat structure was underwater were false. How could the eye of the Sahara be Atlantis if it's landlocked and not an island? Well, the answer to that comes from the fact that words change, and so do their meanings over a long period of time. People often have a habit of taking ancient words just as they are presented. But they forget that ancient writings have outdated language within them. This is true, especially in the case of Plato's writings. Translating ancient Greek into modern-day English will cause misinterpretation, and there is a chance that words might get lost in translation. This could be true for the word island. In Plato's Greek writings, the word nisos was used. This was translated to mean island. But according to the book Joining the Dots, Plato's Atlantis in the central Mediterranean, nesos could mean a plethora of things. It might mean a peninsula, coast, or land within a continent surrounded by lakes, rivers, or springs. Keep in mind that there were no specific Greek words for this till later. So there is a possibility that Plato could have not been talking about an island at all. It could have been the Eye of the Sahara. There's also a claim that Plato wrote this as a moral tale. But note that all of his previous allegories and tales were explicitly called fiction. Plato even stated in his work that this was a true story multiple times. Another main argument that people have for the Eye of the Sahara not being Atlantis is that it is higher than sea level. Well, this argument has been squashed by Mother Nature herself. As we had mentioned earlier, the salt present in this area clearly indicates that it was underwater. This means that it was located below sea level. But it has to be kept in mind that the sinking of this area happened more than 12000 years ago. A lot can happen within this time frame. This is especially true since the movements of the Earth and its crust cannot be predicted. So there is a good chance that although this region used to be below sea level and is now higher, due to how the Earth's crust shifts up and down and side to side. There is also a lot of volcanic activity in this area, which could have accelerated the unpredictable movement of the Earth's crust. Some people also think that if Atlantis was really as big as Plato stated and had sunk into the ocean, we would have found it by now. As you all know, there are several oceanographers, submariners, and researchers who have made it their life's mission to catch a glimpse of the glorious land of Atlantis. A theory against the existence of Atlantis is that someone is bound to have seen remnants of buildings or artifacts. They should have found something that could indicate that advanced forms of life and technology existed in this part of Africa, which was all lost under the sea. However, it should be remembered that a huge flood had wiped out the green landscape that used to be the Sahara. This is exactly what had happened to Atlantis also. The greenery, foliage, and life forms that once existed in the Sahara were wiped out. There is no trace of any of that today. If nature could completely eliminate life and artifacts from a large area of land, it could definitely wipe out a full city with little to no evidence left behind. This legendary island that supposedly sank beneath the waves thousands of years ago has been preserved beneath the shifting sands of the desert. How amazing is that? This discovery is groundbreaking and will surely rewrite the history books and reignite the interest in the mysteries shrouding lost cities. If you want to know more exciting things about cities that have been lost and hold the promise of untold treasures and secrets, do subscribe to our channel. Also, turn on the notifications to get regular updates. Did you know that there are secret files that give an insight into ancient Atlantis? Go check out the video, Secret Files on the Eye of the Sahara and the Lost Ancient City of Atlantis, Richot Structure Africa, to find out more about this.